Welcome to the 2022 ski technical presentation. My name is Ken Gochi, ski product specialist. Here's an overview of what will be discussed in the presentation. Smart shock, new semi-activated suspension, 130 horse 900 ace turbo, 180 horse 900 ace turbo R, and North American Lynx. Let's start with the new smart shock semi-activated suspension. The smart shock will be introduced on the MXZ XRS, Renegade XRS 850 E-Tech, and the Renegade XRS 900 Turbo. The KYB shock technology with active valves controlling the compression and rebound, onboard dynamic suspension positioning and velocity sensors with a steering position sensor, and a in-loop software to control the shock active valves function of the sensor input. By pressing the switch down on the lower left-hand side of the dash, the comfort mode is the most comfortable ride. In this mode, there'll be a little more body roll and might bottom out compared to the other two modes, if being too aggressive. By pressing the switch to the middle, this will put the unit into sport mode. The suspension will act differently to the comfort mode, but still have the comfortable ride with effective stability, control, and a better bottoming resistance. This can be compared to the Renegade Enduro with the XRS bump absorption capacity. And by pushing the switch all the way to the top, we'll put the unit into Sport Plus mode. This will be in full stiffness. All the time, ready for stable, aggressive riding with extreme bump absorption capacity. Automatic anti-bottoming ready to tackle the most extreme situation with easy viewing on the 7.2 and the 7.8 multifunction gauge. The benefits are a self on the fly adjustment suspension, acting on both compression and rebound. The SDCU gets updated info every one millisecond, but the shock will adapt themselves approximately 20 milliseconds up to 50 times per second with a constant monitoring of the suspension positioning and velocity, meaning an improved shock absorption, an automatic anti-bottoming, landing control with increased traction. Let's discuss a bit about how the dampening strategy works. The dampening strategy inputs are based on the following. Real-time data, from five position sensors that is monitoring the RPM and throttle position gradient versus time in order to adjust the suspension. The three shocks are connected and controlled by the suspension dampening control unit, otherwise known as the SDCU, but they are 100% independent. Two sensors are mounted close to the front shock and linked to the upper A-arm. Both front shocks have their own position sensor. To evaluate the shock positioning, one sensor is mounted on the front steering rack. The rear shocks require two sensors, one on the left-hand upper rear suspension arm and one on the front lower right-hand suspension arm. Both rear suspension sensors are required to define the rear shock position speed, direction, as well as rail angle. These inputs and signals to the solenoid valve are processed one millisecond by the SDCU. It will characterize the shock length, shock direction, compression versus rebound, shock speed, shock acceleration, anti-bottoming control, and suspension vehicle height. The wiring passes through the left side floorboard roller, and if ever the harness needs replacing, unplug the connectors and pull on the harness. Then to reinstall, place the harness in the hole of the roller, push to feed it, as the harness is rigid enough to pass through to the other end. There are also protection covers over the sensors and the wiring to protect them from the elements. There are two for the front shock sensors and a plastic cover over the three shock electronics. One under the running board on the left hand side, one on the lower rear right hand A arm and rear upper front left A arm, one on the right hand side of the chain case. The control strategy is an anti-bottoming that works on the shock position and shock acceleration. Pitch launch control works on the shock longitudinal acceleration, positive and negative, of the gradient readings from the ECU from the RPM, TPS, and braking. Stability roll control is based on lateral acceleration, minimizing body roll, steering position, and vehicle speed. Landing control is calculated by the airtime when the shock is at its full extension position. This shock technology uses a soft and hard hydraulic valve on command. A solenoid directs the oil in the selected valve or specific percentage of both. The oil flow can travel in the main tube through the hard valve or bypass it. The oil can bypass the hard valve through a double wall construction. 
Our KYB shock reaction time varies based on multiple factors such as rain adjustment, shock speed, shock direction, compression or rebound, dampening increase or decrease. With the power off, the valves are closed and the shocks are at their full stiffness. There are two ways for the shutdown strategy. One way is the RF key still connected. The system will stay powered up for five minutes. Once the system powers down, the shocks will be in its full stiffness state. The second is by removing the RF key for an instant power down. The shocks will be in its full stiffness state until the unit is powered back up. The shocks can be rebuilt like our other KYBs we have. The only part that cannot be repaired is the internal electrical parts. There are two possible system reaction base failure types. One, the system is completely deactivated. That will mean all shocks will be at their maximum stiffness. Two, the system deactivates either the front or the rear suspension. Now, for an example, if the shock fails, that shock will be in stiff mode and the others will be in semi-active mode. In all cases, the riders will be notified through the cluster that there is a suspension fault and the system will react to ensure the unit can continue to be driven until it can be serviced. There are two common codes. One would be a sensor out of range, usually in the rear suspension, and a service action would be to check for any mechanical damages. And the second one would be the shock electrical open. A service action would be to check for any damaged wires. When PDI in the unit, the shocks will be on the running board as all other models. There'll be no need to reset the sensors as this will be done at the factory. All you need to do is just install the shocks. But if a part is changed, like the support bracket, link arm, upper A arm, sensors, or shocks, a position sensor calibration procedure will need to be done for proper function. By connecting buds placing the mode switch to the sport setting, it is important to lift the front of the unit off the ground to be sure that the shocks are in its full extension position to have a 0% value and the steering angle is also at 0%. Then click on learn for each front shock. Put the front back down and lift the rear of the unit to have it in full extension to have the shock at 0% value and again then click learn for each sensor. This new system cannot be retrofitted or added as a pack accessory as it is extremely expensive. Now moving on to the 900 turbo that has 130 horse with a top RPM of 7250. That will be on the Renegade Enduro Adrenaline and the Grand Touring Limited with a weight reduction of 4.5 pounds. These models will have a new wiring harness to accommodate the new XCU module. New stick coils with no ground wires, Standard ITC housing is used with a new refined calibration that delivers a better tr throttle response with more dynamic manageable with a better feel of the throttle in bumpy conditions. A standard hood and no intercooler. With no intercooler on 130 horse, the plumbing is slightly different with one intake pipe that is in place. The 130 and 180 horse will use the same injectors, but the 130 will maintain a duty cycle less than 90% while keeping the same fuel pump parameters and fuel pressure of 58 PSI, with a boost of 8.7. Because of the increase in horsepower, stiffer engine mounts have been utilized for a better belt life. The 571 belt is the same one as the 850 NA and the 850 E-Tech Turbo. Optimized intake that reduces back pressure for best dynamic response for power. New muffler, updated for all turbo engines with an improved internal component to reduce back pressure. For the new 900 Turbo R that has 180 horse with a top RPM of 7250, 30 horse more than the previous 150 horse model. That will be on the Renegade XRS, X, Enduro, Adrenaline, Grand Touring Limited, and the Limited Mach Z Edition. We'll also have a new wiring harness, new XCU, and calibration with a refined ITC behavior and a new revised intercooler that has a thicker core with lower back pressure and is more efficient. With an increase in horsepower to the maximum without adding any major parts, with the same compression ratio of 9.1 to 1, the 900 Turbo R also has the same engine base as the other 900 Aces. With bigger injectors that are not the same as the 900 Ace NA, while keeping the same fuel pump parameters and fuel pressure of 58 PSI. New stick coils, no ground wires are necessary. 
On the 180 horse, it will have a boost of 17.4 PSI with a stronger wastegate spring. Because of the increase in horsepower, stiffer engine mounts and the 571 drive belt from the 850 E-Tech NA and Turbo is used for better belt life. With no changes to the QRS venting, it is the same as the 150 horse 900 Turbo. To handle the extra power, the P-Drive clutch is updated with more robust governor cup and uses a silifont material that is 20% stronger. The back torque rollers use a Torlon material to increase the strength, wear resistance, and to avoid flat spots. A new turbo intake that optimizes the airflow and reduces back pressure to have the best dynamic response. A new MAPS and pressure sensor have been installed because of the higher boost pressure. New muffler updated for all turbo engines with improved internal components to reduce back pressure. A standard throttle lever and cable that is connected to the ITC throttle block is located just underneath the airbox that gives a better feel and control in the bumpy conditions. Similar strategy between the 130 and the 180 horse, but specific because of standard throttle usage with new configuration of the throttle block, the reposition, the adjustment from the front to the back is not capable. When replacing the ITC or the cable, there's no special procedure. Just adjust the free play and initialize with buds. Lynx is coming to North America. Rave RE 3500 E-Tech, Boondocker DS3900 850 E-Tech with sea level calibration and the Boondocker DS4100 850 E-Tech with high altitude calibration. The Rave RE3500 is a trail sled, firm Lynx ergonomic seat, new PPS3 rear suspension with KYB46 HLCR, Kashima coated shocks, 15 by 137 by 1.5 studded ice cobra track, and on the front, a 43-inch ski stance with the new KYB46 HLCR Kashima coated shocks and the new Blade XC Plus skis. The KYB46 Kashima shocks have a massive 46 millimeter piston, bigger capacity, bigger oil volume in the shock. High low speed clicker adjustment with a wider ski stance for flatter cornering and a 10 millimeter longer travel a better bump absorption capacity, smoother dampening on bumpy trails. The Rave RE frame has a width of 32.2 inches with specific and lateral foot openings. The new Blade XC Plus ski is a square design, meaning a more aggressive, predictive and directional stability ski, even in soft snow. Under the ski, it will have a square carbide. This type of ski setup will have more ski lift on groom hard pack trails PPS stands for Poly People Suspension. The PPS was originally designed for snowcross racing. Early versions of the PPS was used for the first time on production sleds in 1992 that was named Cobra Racing 583. What makes this suspension so unique? Independent rear suspension, center and rear arm work independently. It's a long travel suspension, progressive long center, vertical travel of 9.8 inches, and the rear arm travel 11.4 inches. More control weight transfer guarantees explosive acceleration. KYB Pro 46 Kashima coated shocks with stiffer calibration, a massive 46 millimeter piston diameter in both center and rear shocks. High low speed clicker adjustment, rebound adjustment with a smaller adjustment step of eight clicks per full turn. Good bump absorption at high speeds. Less vibration and less track noise than the PPS2. 70% less friction in key joints from the swing arm and the rear arm link joints with less rolling resistance. The PPS3 track tension specification with the rear of the sled lifted up, without any pull down force, there should be a gap of 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters. This is when the track is in its full natural sag. When using a tensiometer, a push down force of 16 pounds and a track deflection of 1.4 inches to 1.8 inches. Now measuring the rear sag, first pull up on the rear and let down gently. Take a measurement from the rear suspension bolt through the opening in the running board to the ground with no weight on the unit. Then with the rider with his or her riding gear on, sitting on the unit in the riding position, take another measurement from the rear suspension bolt through the opening of the running board to the ground. 
the sag should have a reading difference of 3.7 inches. Now, if the sag is less or more than 3.7 inches, by turning the spring block one rotation, this will add more preload or less preload and will give an approximately 1.5 millimeters of adjustment either way. Also, if the rider's weight is more than 231 pounds, you'll need to change to stiffer rear springs and re-verify the sag. Boondocker DS3900 and 4100 850 E-Tech are deep snow models. The key features on both Boondockers are Rotax 850 E-Tech engine, Radiant DS platform, the seat is tailor-made for technical deep snow, rough riding with the thicker foam absorbs the shocks when landing with comfort and freedom to move around in mine. Aggressive handlebar grips that are thinner with a better grip with less fatigue. PPS2 rear suspension comes with a KYB36 Kashima coated shocks, a 16 by 154 by two and a half inch track on the 3900 Boondocker, and a 16 by 165 by three inch on the Boondocker 4100 with a rear axle snow guard to help project the snow to the heat exchanger and away from the rider that is following from behind. LFS Plus front suspension KYB 36 Kashima coated shocks also with a 36 inch ski stance. Blade DS Plus ski. The frame width is 32.2 inches. A narrower running board designed on the Boondocker 3900 and 4100 are a little different than the North American models. They are just as strong with no ice buildup and excellent grip for the rider. The Blade DS Plus on the Boondockers are made for technical deep snow riding that offers predictable steering in high speed turns, easy handling, even crossing old tracks. The Boondocker PPS2 uses a KYB 36 inch Kashima shock with a stiffer calibration designed for a broader usage in deep snow and in hard pack. With an open rear arm design prevents snow buildup with an improved cooling. Now that's all the information on our new technology. Make sure to reach out with any questions and have a safe and fun winter.